Hey y'all, welcome back to part five of my Logic Pro 11 side chaining techniques course. In this video, I want to explain and show you the difference between max and some detection modes in Logic's compressor. This determines how the compressor reacts to incoming stereo signals. So if you're working with mono material or you're using an external side chain source that is mono or mostly mono, these options aren't going to make much of a difference. However, if you're working with stereo material, whether you're just using compression in the normal way with an internal sidechain source or whether you're using a stereo external sidechain source, it's worth jumping back and forth between these two to see which gives you the better result for your application. So let me just explain these first. In max mode, the compressor always responds to whichever side, left or right, is currently louder. This is really useful when you wanna make sure that any sort of sudden peaks on one side or the other don't slip through unnoticed. Although max can have sort of a tendency to over compress things, as I'll demonstrate in just a bit. So max sort of ensures that any loud transients that are on the sort of out outer edges, you know, more in the left channel or more in the right channel will still trigger the compression. In contrast to that, the sum detection mode combines the signal of the left and right channels and uses that as the side chain source for compression. So the left and right channels are summed together and the combined signal of the two is the signal that the compressor reacts to. And this will often give you a smoother, more balanced response across the stereo field. Now, generally speaking, it's recommended to use max when using an external sidechain source. But in this video, we're gonna take a bit of a break from external sidechain sources and use all internal sidechain sources. So again, that's the default setting. And all that means is that the track that you have the compressor on is the signal that is triggering the compressor to react. And another thing I just wanna mention up front here is there's no like catch all for what detection modes you should use. Toggle between the two as you apply compression and use the one that sounds best to your ear. I should also mention that if you're working with mono material, like the bass here, switching back and forth between max and sum is not really going to make much of a difference, if at all any difference. So we're not gonna use this on the bass, at least in this video, but in the future, we will play around with the detection filter on the bass. Let's just take a moment and give our new musical example a listen here. Okay, so let's start by adding this to the drums. Let's go ahead and throw the compressor on here. And let's just dial in a setting that sort of brings out the punch of the drums a bit. So you can hear with the compression, the transients are a little bit more focused. And if you really want to exaggerate that, remember you can put this in peak detection mode and you're gonna get even more of those transients. Now that's probably too much for this example. So let's go ahead and go back to RMS. Now. For this part of the drum pattern where it's just kick, snare, hi-hat, and some crashes, you're probably not going to hear that much of a difference between max and some other than like maybe a, a difference in the amount of compression that's applied. Let's try that out. So in max, we're getting around four or five dB of compression. Let's go to some.
Yeah, we're getting slightly less, but it's almost the same. It's like three to four, three to five. But let's try this out here at 21, where there's a drum fill in here with a couple of toms. The toms are panned pretty hard left and pretty hard right. So in max mode, we should expect more compression on those toms because it's individually responding to the transients in the left and right channels. So we're almost getting too much compression on those tom fills. And this is what I was saying before. A lot of folks will recommend using Max for drums, especially drum overheads or drum room mics. But for the drum bus, I actually recommend using some because this will give you a little more of a balanced compression, especially when those more hard panned stereo elements come in, like the toms. Or maybe you've got a little baby crash cymbal that's really off to the right. Or maybe you have some auxiliary percussion or octobons or something way off to the left. This can help to sort of balance the compression a bit better. Let's give this a listen with some. Yeah, so we're getting about the same amount of compression as everything else, around four or five dB. Whereas in max, we're getting like upwards of eight dB of compression just on the toms. So if you're trying to apply bus compression to your drum track and you're finding that all of your stereo elements are sounding really weak, this can be a reason why, because you may be using max detection instead of some detection. Now you can use this in conjunction with peak and RMS along with the mix blend here. So for example, I could use peak to get a really strong transient emphasis. And obviously you wouldn't want that in the mix, but you can go to output here and then blend this and just bring a little bit of that compression in. So we're getting more punch but we're not over compressing those toms and we're blending in the amount of compression we're using. Let's go ahead and hear that in the mix. And we may need a little makeup gain here because this compression is attenuating the signal quite a bit. And you probably heard there's some little clicks in the signal. That's coming from the bass. I'm gonna show you how to reduce those in the next video when we move on to the sidechain filter. Let's check out the guitars here. So we've got stereo guitars left and right. Okay, so let's go ahead and set these to Unity, and then we're going to add these to a track stack. So let's go ahead and add those to a summing stack here. So with max detection, it's doing a really good job of pulling down any of the, you know, the spikes that are on the far left or far right side of the stereo field. And if you put this again in peak mode, it's going to give you a really transient focused mode. Because it's compressing right after the transient. And again, that's based on your attack time. In fact, I'm going to pull that up a bit. But let's, let's go back to RMS mode because it helps to sort of maintain more of the body of the guitars. But let's throw this in some mode and compare the two. Let's jump over here to bar six.
This is a really difficult thing to hear and a very subtle effect, but using some on guitars like this tends to be smoother overall. What I'm hearing is not necessarily that much of a difference in terms of the amount of compression that's being applied, although there is a difference like by one or two dB. Really what I'm hearing here is in some mode, the group of the two guitars sounds more like a cohesive unit that's all working together, whereas in max mode, these little outlier transients on the left and right can trigger the compressor to sort of overreact a little bit. However, if you had a stereo guitar bus that has a lot more stereo variation in it, like here, the guitars are playing the same thing. So some makes sense. But if you were trying to control transients on the far left or right side of the stereo image, like maybe two different guitar parts kind of playing together, you might want to try out max mode instead because the guitar part on the left, for example, might have more transient material than the guitar on the right. So it's definitely worth A, being these two modes when you're doing any sort of bus compression. So I think I like the sum mode here. In fact, let's jump over to another circuit here. Let's go to the classic VCA. And one thing I just wanted to point out here that I forgot to point out in the last video is that if you choose any of the analog circuits, none of these have a peak versus RMS detection mode, you only have the option to choose between max and sum. So just something to keep in mind there. Again, it's a super subtle difference, but to my ear, I like some mode. Let's go to the organ here. And this isn't just any normal organ. This is an organ that has the tremolo effect on it. So it inherently has some very different left and right uh, variations in the stereo field. So you can hear the tremolo effect panning left and right, but there's also this pulsing effect from the simulated Leslie rotary cabinet in the instrument. And so this is another situation where if you're gonna add compression after the tremolo, you may get two very different results when you use max versus sum. So let's dial in a compression setting here. Just wanna sort of tame things a little bit, not a lot of compression. Let's go ahead and pull the volume up on that. But you can see in peak mode, we're getting much more variety in terms of where the gain reduction is, as I demonstrated in the previous video. So let's stick with RMS for this, but let's go back and forth between max and sum. So the observation I'm making here in max mode is that when the signal's off to the far right or far left of the stereo image, we're almost getting more compression than we are when the signal's more toward the center. So let's try this out in some mode. Obviously we're getting more compression on the transients. But where the gain reduction is located when the signal is further over to the left or further over to the right is a little bit more balanced. It's a little bit smoother in some mode here. Whereas in max mode, we're getting more compression when the signal is further off to the left or further off to the right. Yeah, we're seeing like a three or four dB jump 
when the signal is off to the left or right, whereas in some mode, it's more like a, a 2 dB difference. So again, a super subtle thing, but it's worth pointing out. And, and again, it's not going to destroy your mix if you accidentally use max over some in a particular situation. It's more like just try it out and see which one sounds best to your ear. It may only be a 2% difference or a 5% difference, but it's worth A being these two detection modes when you're applying compression with an internal side chain source. And again, if you're using an external side chain source, it's recommended to use max detection. But if your side chain source is kind of more mono, like a kick drum or a snare drum, something where most of the energy is in the center, it's not really going to matter that much. Okay, so those are the detection modes, max and sum, and peak and RMS. Definitely worth a being these anytime you add compression, whether that is with an external sidechain source or an internal sidechain source. In the next video, we'll move on to the detection filter settings. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.